<coughs> well, good morning. Welcome back to our ongoing session on emotional intelligence. Today we will be discussing on a very important topic known as emotional intelligence in education. We have been educated in various topics in our school days, in our college, universities, etc., etc. But we hardly find any curriculum, any topic on emotional intelligence uh, during last couple of decades. But however, with the invent and discovery of this concept, nowadays emotional intelligence has been seen all around starting from uh, uh, school education to higher education as well as in um, university and in management education. In recent times, we have been seen that in India, the EI has come up in a big way. Not only in technical education such as like NIT, IITs, uh, it has become a part and parcel of all management programs, uh, not only in India, but also across the globe. So, that shows the importance of emotional intelligence in education systems. What is the importance of it? We are going to examine one by one. Before going into details, let us have a look at a small video clips through uh, uh, YouTube that I have taken. Uh, a, a, this is a clip taken from a very popular Bollywood movies uh, that was um, uh, very important to know and that has reflected the essence of emotional intelligence in education. Let us have a look. Subjects may first mom algebra, geometry, physics, chem, bio, history, English, geography, good or Hindi me? Hindi me second will be sirf do marks. of emotional intelligence in education systems, particularly when you look into India. We never come across emotional intelligence as a part of our curriculum. Now, it is high time. This, this picture has completely highlighted how emotionally weak people can be suppressed to the maximum level and uh, how uh, emotional assertiveness can lead people forward for their growth and development. We need to nurture emotional assertiveness. We need to understand the emotions of people. We need to judge their body language, what exactly they are trying to show. So, it is not that somebody is master blaster in geography or algebra is going to be a um, Nobel laureate in future, not necessarily, but in order to be a successful and effective person, one need to muster all those qualities that are required for the survival of the society as well as the individual effectively. So, in a nutshell to highlight that, we never studied emotional intelligence as part of a subject or as part of our curriculum in our lifetime. So, now this is the right time to make use of it. Now, coming back to emotional intelligence in education. Now, the question arises, uh, when you talk about uh, emotional intelligence, these are some of the questions uh, I, I need to ask you, you and all of you who are the readers of this course. What is the need of emotional intelligence in education? Is it that only student requires emotional intelligence to be developed or the teacher also equally needs to be developed on these dimensions? That is a debate, that is a big question that all of us need to answer as academician, as learners, as students of emotional intelligence. Then the next question is that can EI be taught? Can emotional intelligence be delivered in the classroom as a subject? If yes, how? If no, why not? So, we need to answer this question also. Then the third question is can EI be assessed? We have been discussing. You know, uh, I would rather say as a psychologist, psychology is the most complex subject on the earth. It is so abstract in nature, very difficult to quantify. When uh, 
I teach psychology or positive psychology in my class. I used to ask my hardcore technical engineers, prospective engineers who have been admitted to their engineering program at IIT Khadakpur. Uh, I often ask them, uh, can we quantify happiness? Can you quantify attitude? Can you quantify vision? Can you quantify values, virtues, character, strengths? Surprisingly, I used to get a very gloomy answer. People often say, no sir, these are very subjective in nature, they can't be quantified. Just like whenever I say, are you intelligent? A person who gets into the Indian IIT education systems is considered to be the most intelligent person in India. But when I ask those engineers, how many of you think that you are intelligent, but I do not get answer spontaneously. So, it means that there is something that just clearing J entrance and getting into IIT or IIMs is not necessarily the sign of your intelligence. Earlier times, we, we were attributing to IQ process as the marker of one's intelligence. But with the, uh, with the passage of time, development of theories, models and test instruments, the concept of practice of IQ is getting obsolete gradually because of only one reason, because IQ is such a concept, mo mostly it is developed on the perspective of listening or logical abilities. But what is beyond logic and reasoning? Is our all intellectual profile is restricted only into the reasoning ability? The answer is probably not. Our intelli intelligence or cognitive ability is much more bigger than our IQ factor. So, therefore, nowadays people are talking about intelligence in terms of cognitive abilities, which is much more broader than our reasoning or logical abilities. So, in the same way, can there be emotional intelligence? If yes, what, what are the domains? And if there are domains and there is an instrument of EQ like IQ, then why emotional intelligence cannot be measured in education system? So, now coming back to the next questions, what are the tools and that can be used for students EQ profiling? As we have already discussed about uh, the psychometric status of emotional intelligence in our previous classes, mainly the, you will find there are nowadays large number of emotional intelligence tests are available in the global market, both in India and abroad. Anybody can choose as per their uh, expertise a particular a test for the assessment of emotional intelligence and its interventions. The next question is, what are the tools that can be used for students EQ profiling? Can AI be part of students curriculum? Now, the question is, can AI be part of students curriculum? Yes, definitely, why not? We need to understand the concept of AI if not in conceptual or theoretical model, because theories are so complex to teach our students, at least in form of exercise, in form of activity, in, in terms of uh, what you say, you know, um, games, sports, everywhere you can assess one's emotional intelligence. Uh, there are enormous ways to assess and profile one's emotional intelligence domains. Can AI be part of students curriculum? Yes. Does AI improve student success? Numerous studies are available in scientific literature and journals that yes, emotional intelligence likely to enhance a student's overall academic achievements. Then now the next question is designing a student's development program for AI development. If there could be possibility that AI could be designed and developed for the improvement of the whole education systems, where both the learner, learned and the teacher or teaching assistants can be benefited out of it, then why not? I think if teaching one person is you know educating a large number. So, this is how the, the, the education spread all over the society. So, that could be the most important benefit of mankind if you educate people 
on emotional intelligence. Why I am saying? Because nowadays the growing nature of aggressive behavior, retaliation, conflict, fighting, which is grossly disturbing the not only national peace, but also international peace all across the globe. St taking from example, starting from Middle East to India, Pakistan, Russia, America, Palestine, Israel, China, Japan. So, everywhere we are moving towards a war zone, which is disturbing the international peace, prosperity and growth. Probably, EQ could be a global tool, educating students, educating society, educating mankind to realize the side effects of our emotions and egos, which are giving birth to so much international conflicts in our society. So, now let us move forward to examine, although we have examined just to recapitulate the concept of emotional intelligence. Uh, you know, uh, the MHS Multi Health Systems 2015 they define emotional intelligence is nothing but an area of non cognitive abilities or capabilities, competencies, skills that influence one's ability to succeed in coping with environmental demands and pressures. This is uh, this definition comes out of the research conducted by Robin Barron who is known to be the first psychologist, international psychologist to come up with a, a global instrument on Barron's EQI and that has now highlighted the importance of EQ in education systems. Uh, and I would like I strongly suggest this test for its use in educational activities for the development of uh, emotional intelligence of students, teachers and um, even in health sectors we can very well apply to enhance the, the emotional intelligence level of nurses, doctors, etcetera and the caregivers in general. The second definition as you all know and that the, it is the ability to perceive, to access, generate emotions so as to assist thoughts, to understand emotions, emotional meanings and to reflectively regulate emotions in ways that promote emotional and intellectual growth. The third definition uh, given by Daniel Goldman shows that its capacity for recognizing our own feelings and those of others for motivating ourselves and for managing emotions in well, well in ourselves and in our relationships. Now, the question is why emotional intelligence, why it needs to be incorporated in curriculums. We have seen that uh, uh, from Goldman's book that uh, why EQ matters more than your IQ, you know. IQ is an essential component uh, of uh, one's uh, employability. If you are high on your IQ, it may get you into a job, but in order to thrive on stressful jobs and in order to reach uh, the ladder of your success, there is something more than IQ required what we call the non-cognitive abilities or EQ skills and competencies. So, that is why we need emotional intelligence, because emotional intelligence facilitates our EQ skills and competencies that are required for our survival and success both in education, at work, at home. So, there is a growing body of research findings that scientifically demonstrates that emotional intelligence predicts how well we perform at home, school and in workplace. So, this is what uh, Robin Barron uh, talks about, but we, uh, as, as, an, uh, as a psychologist even I have come across, I have imparted more than thousands of people both in uh, different sectors such as defense, uh, industry, academia and uh, in schools starting from Kendra with the central schools to, to uh, different state level colleges uh, and then uh, educational training centers. Uh, uh, last last 15 years has been uh, a wonderful journey in the field of emotional intelligence for me and uh, which have given me Im a tremendous support to come up with two volumes on emotional intelligence. My first volume was on emotional uh, intelligence perspectives in organizations and the second one is emotional intelligence optimizing human performance uh, in organizations. The second book was published by Lap Lambert. Uh, Germany and first one uh, was published by Academic Excellence that is in New Delhi. So, any one of you interested 
uh, you can very well refer these two books. So, one deals with uh, the basic concepts, uh, theories, models and assessments and the second book focuses on the applied sides of emotional intelligence. So, uh, uh, when I look at the concept of emotional intelligence, it gives me tremendous energy to expand the horizon of the subjects. Yeah, it is endless to think about the application of emotional intelligence in human life starting from personal as well as professionals. So, that is why every every month you will find uh, hundreds of articles coming out of EI research. I will just uh, uh, for your knowledge uh, just show you a slide that will give you an impression that my growing interest of research in AI that shows that uh, how we have published uh, various research papers in the field of emotional intelligence research at least in India. Uh, these are some of my research scholars currently working in the field of uh, emotional intelligence as well as uh, uh, its uh, related domains. Uh, say for examples uh, such as uh, emotion, we, be, we began with one concept as emotion at workplace insights and challenges. This, this article uh, was published in Indian Journal of Training and Development, where we, we have uh, discussed uh, how emotion control human behavior at workplace. If it is not properly shaped during your education, you are likely to suffer from setback of the side effects of uh, uh, job stress, anxiety, irritation, uh, retaliation, etcetera, etcetera. There are also other papers that also shows like say for example, curiosity and the meaning of life leading towards personal growth, the role of emotional intelligence. This, this is published in the journal of Indian Academy of Applied Psychology. We have published with another two of my colleagues, Professor Mohanty and Professor uh, Mr. Jena, who is currently my research scholar. Mm. So, uh, uh, this, this has shown the importance of emotional intelligence in, in the development of one's personal growth and development. So, likewise there are many other papers that we have published in the recent times highlighting the importance of emotional intelligence. Say for example, this is one of them like emotional intelligence and pro-social behaviors, the multidimensional trait analysis of technical students. This was published in the Journal of Strategic Human Resource Management in India. Uh, in fact, th this, this article was uh, developed out of the project work conducted by my uh, postgraduate students during their um, education. They, they were doing it as a, they, they were doing a course on emotional intelligence and this was part of their projects which has led them to publish a scientific papers. So, th that is a growing interest of uh, emotional intelligence and its applicability. So, maybe in the last uh, uh, 10 years, uh, I am able to come up with uh, not less than 20 papers in scientific journals. Uh, many of them are also published in international journals. So, that shows the growing intel interest of uh, emotional intelligence, the growing need of emotional intelligence in our education systems and uh, more and more research will ensure, will validate empirically the status of emotional intelligence, the importance of emotional intelligence in the overall development of every human beings and that, that will predict their performance successfully at home, school and workplace. Then the question is why focus on emotional intelligence in higher education? When you talk about diversifying higher education in social science, management, basic science, applied science, engineering, technology, then what exactly why people are talking about focus on emotional intelligence in higher education? Let us have a look. This is a statement given by Dr. Richard Carison, the chief of mental health, Howard University. It is clear 
that academic success goes hand in hand with emotional and physical well being. College is a fresh start for many students, but dysfunctional coping styles can cripple their efforts. Even students who get by or succeed academically can be at risk if unhealthy behavioral patterns follow them after college. Promoting emotional health in students is an investment in the future. This or it should be part of the mission of all college and universities. Since we say that students are the future citizens of any country and in order to nurture a good citizenship behavior in our students, we need to look into the emotional functioning of our students which will take care of many, many, many positive characteristics to be developed within them. So, that is why emotional intelligence is very much important to be nurtured in our education systems. Emotional intelligence in higher education, what are the issues that we need to address or connect with student success? How AI? experiencing stress. One of the important benefit of uh, uh, imparting emotional intelligence in higher education could be stress management. Nowadays, tremendous stress being experienced uh, due to uh, academic overload, inability to spend time uh, outside with friends, colleagues, unable to focus on sports and leisure. So, uh, this often happens with uh, students due to a lack of time management skills. So, which creates a tremendous pressure in the mind of a students. As a result, he is unable to attend classes properly, he is unable to interact with friends and colleagues politely, frequently or friendly. So, as a result, he tries to isolate himself from the mainstream of the students community. So, what happens next? He starts experiencing isolation deprivation and putting himself into a state of depression. And we have seen a person suffering from chronic depression may lead towards developing tendency for suicide ideation or committing suicide. So, in order to prevent from such fatal incidents or accidents, we need to take precautions, we need to understand the emotional state of every student of the higher education community. As a result, we can save life, we can nurture life, we can develop life and we can build a better society. And that is the main focus of uh, uh, nurturing emotional intelligence in education systems. The second characteristic is fe feeling overwhelmed. See, most of the young adult who are coming to college or higher education, for the first time they are staying away from their family. Just imagine the kind of stress they would be experiencing they never stayed away from their parents, from their cousins, from their um, own family members. Now, suddenly when they enter into higher education, they are away from their family, loved ones, they are deprived from the love affection of their parents and that could be tremendous stressful overwhelmingly. And many times you know when a happy moment comes in, they do not also do not know how to put a full stop or where should draw the line of limit of enjoyment and sometimes they fall, they fell in trap of wrong habits. As a result, they develop many unwanted behavior that are socially disapproved, constitutionally denied. So, in order to nurture a positive citizenship within a, within a person, it is important to make them realize what is enjoyable. What is it, what you, where they should put a full stop to their overwhelming satisfaction or feelings. Not getting along with others, we have seen the large number of students in our campus also completely cut off from their friend circle, completely cut, cut off from the mainstream of students community. And uh, that sends a message that it is high time to take care, take care of their mental, the mental status. So, as a result, not getting along with others means a sign of deprivations. They are not getting along with 
others. They, uh, they lack emotional skills. They lack interactive skills. They lack emo interpersonal skills. So, interpersonal skill is such a skills where the person needs to be very friendly, interactive, outgoing, exchange his ideas and views freely. And, uh, as a result, he is able to create a state of good friendship uh, and that makes his life lively. Then giving up, many times what happens out of frustration and failures, many students they give up things, they give up their goals of life, they feel very frustrated. If, if, if the student, if the curriculum, study curriculum is too heavy, they start bonking classes. There is a higher rate of absenteeism. So, in order to deprive, in, in order to stop all these things to happen again and again for them, we need to make them emotionally stable, emotionally assertive, emotionally understanding the, the true cause and concern of the facts, so that they can come up correctly. And the next issue is engaging in a destructive behavior. Many people say for example, we are talking in a higher education context, most of the students, uh, some of them uh, say uh, out of curiosity, out of uh, sense of experiment, they experiment with such new and novel behavior, those are very devastating for themselves, very destructive for themselves. You, we, we have also seen that a very small, small, uh, 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 small uh, kid, those who enter into higher education, they start they, they, they start smoking and drinking, which they never did in their lifetime, till they reach 18 or 19 years of their life. How suddenly what a wrong transformation that takes place within themselves. So, that is why we often say that we need to take care of the adults and behavior very carefully, right. So, engaging in, we can deprive, we can deprive them from many destructive behavior by the help of emotional intelligence. Thank you very much. When we come back, we will carry forward our discussion, what could be the other benefits when you address the issue of emotional intelligence in education. Mm -hmm.